So this patient's coming in for removal of a lesion that's in his mid-back. Um, this was drained about two, three months October. ago? October. Yeah, October. So those ones, it takes about two, two and a half months for the membrane to re-solidify so that we can take it out properly. But it'll probably be a little bit less strong than normal, so it may be difficult to maintain the membrane here. We'll have to sort of see how that develops. Um, so what we've done here is, again, the same issue. You've seen us mark the extent of the actual cyst from the underside, and this is where we're going to be incising along. And this is just our extra freezing. But the cyst does cause some bulging here. So again, it's going to be more superficial, so we have to be a little bit careful. Um, I'm working with the resident again today, so we'll be doing a combination of things. So this is our number 15 blade here. You mean I'm a test, test tube? <laughs> you're, you're part of our testing process, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's good. So, and what did we use to freeze this? 1% lidocaine. Yeah, 1% lidocaine. And what are the contraindications to lidocaine? Do you know any? Besides allergy. Allergy is one. There's three main ones. Allergy is one of them. So, what's the allergy rate for lidocaine by percentage, if you had to guess? 5%. That's about 1%. So, it's pretty, pretty low, which is thankful from that perspective. So the other one's not an absolute contraindication. We talked about this before. It's more one of the reasons why it fails. So what would another reason be why we don't use lidocaine or think about using something different? Um, if there's an infection. Yeah, a big infection process. And really that's more one of caution about just being aware of the fact that uh, you may need to use more. And then the third one deals with the side effect potential. So as an anesthetic, it's also what's the other purpose we have for lidocaine? Mm -hmm. Purposes. Exactly, right, as a class of drug. So what class of drug is it from a cardiac perspective? Is it antiarrhythmic? It's an antiarrhythmic. Excellent. Do you remember what class? How many classes of antiarrhythmics are there? There are five classes. There are five classes. Excellent. Is it the first class? It is absolutely the first class. And as a bonus, which subset of first class? I'll give you three options, A, B, C, and D. Four options. <laughs> <laughs> a, B, and C. Um... <laughs> Say A. It's B. Oh, okay. Close. That Awfully my, close. That was my second guess. Yeah. I don't even know the difference between three and four, so don't feel so bad. <laughs> so. There you go. There. So when the resident was bringing up the issue before, that when we lanced this in October, that we had put him on an antibiotic. So what are those cases? Why do we, do you know any criteria why we put people on antibiotics? So if they are immunocompromised. Yeah. Um, if the individual has something like type 2 diabetes, which yep. also can make them have difficulty with wound healing. Yep. Um, if it's, uh, depending on the location as well, it could be more likely to get uh, contaminated. Um, and maybe the size of it as well. Actually, size is one of them. They look at less than, if you had to guess, by centimeter. Mm -hmm. So greater than what size you think we would actually put them on antibiotic. This might be a complete guess for you, but... Five centimeters? It's actually two centimeters. Oh. You know, so, but those type of things we consider. Certainly people who have um, like mechanical heart valves, that's another one, or prosthesis in place. Mm -hmm. So if you see here, you can see that's definitely membrane right there. So I have to be careful through this area. So you can see it right there. There's a difference. This is, you know, part of the dermis and epidermis. And this right here, that's, that's cyst membrane. So I'm going to come around the other side and I'll dissect down the top of it. You're doing okay? Yep. But this fear is hurting. Oh, okay. For some reason. So generally what I'll always choose to do in these cases, I'll go away from the area where it might be draining just so that we can dissect this down more. And get more to a spot where we can open this up a little bit better. continue to dissect this down here. So again, if we get back to who we do do and don't put on antibiotics, um, I talked about this in another video, but um, I always make sure that residents and, and students are aware of the fact that we should always be cognizant of antibiotic resistance rates because it's becoming a real problem. So as much as possible, we certainly want to be cautious in terms of what we use. Um, and I mentioned in another video, I don't know if I asked you this question before, Jala, but mm -hmm. um, if you look at macrolide resistance rates to uh, penicillin variants, you know what the, that resistance rate is at now? Like the macrolides themselves? Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
maybe twenty percent. Yeah, so that's the, so that's I shouldn't say not against the um, moxicillin, but um, the macrolides against uh, strep pneumonia. That's the biggest issue, and it's around. So strep pneumonia variants, which cause obviously pneumonia as a condition. Um, there's more and more resistance to that. And the other big one we see is enterococcus, which is like E. coli for bladder infections. Mm -hmm. That's got a similar resistance to um, ciprofloxacin, you know, which is the ones we use for that. So mm -hmm. we should always be able to justify why we're doing something and be aware of those rates at some level. So here on the ends, we're just trying to wrap this around. You're feeling comfortable? Yeah. So in all these cases, we're trying to dissect down through the epidermis and the dermis and get to the hypodermis. And then once we get down to there, then we can curve back underneath it and dissect it out. Goes here. This is where I want to be careful. So I'm going to go back out the other side and I'm going to dissect this side out. So here on the end, you just see me, I just run the scalpel across just like that, just to open that up just a little bit. So you can see here, if you bring that up, up actually, can you see inside there? So this is what I'm dissecting down, like these adhesions that are here. I can see those, and oddly enough, you can actually feel the difference when it gives towards hypodermis. I can actually tell, even just in terms of how the scalpel is sweeping, that it's at a different level. You're hanging in there? Yeah, but this here is aching for some reason. I'll take a I look at it after we're done. because of my chin. Could be. Yeah. yeah. That's good. That's about it. <laughs> so this, you can, this is hard. Can you see the difference there, Jayla? So right there is where we're starting hypodermis. Mm -hmm. That's a yellowish kind of. Yeah, exactly. Change. So sometimes it's just a tinge, and that's why I have to get used to seeing it. And that's what changes the more of these you're allowed to see. You get more familiar. See it? You can see it better there. See how that's hypodermis? That's mm -hmm. yellow through there. Mm -hmm. You're still comfortable? Yeah, I got a little pain sort of here, but that's okay. Not too bad? Almost, almost. No. I'm not going to pass out. <laughs> that's good. So here we can see that this one, I'm going to take this here out. Actually, one second. I want to see if this is open. Can we pull that for me? Oh, yeah, yeah. Some yeah, that's you can see that leaking some membranes right there, and you can see the other one at the back side. Mm -hmm. And I put pressures exploding from both sides, just like that. Just drop some normal saline for me. Mm -hmm. So what we want to look back for. So this is awfully clean underneath it. Um, I want to invert this edge, and I want to make sure I don't see any membrane. It's there. That looks pretty clean all the way around. So we're just going to syringe this out. 
so this is just for cleaning purposes. It's gonna feel a bit cold. Yeah, I can, I can feel it. <laughs> yeah, do maybe three. Mm -hmm. There you okay. go. And certainly always see we do this when there's been any type of rupture. Um, but even without it, we oftentimes do it just to make sure we're cleaning Ooh. it. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Do I need the internet? Uh, let me take a look first and see. I think so. Mm -hmm. Feels like ice cubes. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. We'll do again same issue. You know, we'll do we'll do one just see if we can see yeah. it together. So, what I'm debating here is how well this comes together. And certainly how active the patient's going to be in sort of pulling those apart. Um, if I'm dealing with young men and women who are doing a lot of lifting, um, or any age to be quite honest, um, then I'm going to be more sensitive to that. So these dermal stitches, you start from deep and you move to superficial. And then you do the opposite on the other side. So what you want to make sure is that it's it's not only at the same right across from each other, but you also want to make sure that you have the right depth as well. So again, the closer you are to the epidermal dermal junction, the tighter this will actually seal, um, and sometimes that's critical depending on what you're doing. In this case, I'm only doing it to add strength, so I don't really care if it's right up sealed because I'm going to use the top ones for that. Just go right down on the knot for me. Good. So I'll slow these down in a second so we see what we're doing. So here we're always putting the needle perpendicular, so it should be driven in at 90 degrees, even though it may look like that's not what it looks like at the end. But that's this patient doesn't have the skin that's too too thick, but some manual laborers, their skin is super thick. And if you're not putting that needle in at 90 degrees, it'll bend your actual needle. So what I mean by that, if this is my spot, I'm not going to drive it in like this. You can see that the angle is on an angle like, I don't know, 30 degrees, 45 degrees, 60 degrees. You want to be at 90 degrees when you drive it in. And then if you want, you can draw it back and you can change the angle with which you're putting it in. But you want to pierce the skin at 90 degrees. Here's your V, three loops so it locks. It should lay flat like that. Again, not like that. Flat like that. Stab it for me. Stab that for me. Then one loop. So bug in your ear? Almost. We're almost done. Aches. It aches here. Yeah, your ear does? Yeah. Could be because of the position because you're leaning on that side. Yeah. But we'll take a look at that in one second. That's no big deal. So I'm just going to pause the video here. So there's a couple left to go. I'm going to let the resident take care of that and see how that goes. And I'm just going to make some adjustments to these stitches at the back.